Hollywood marriages are not generally noted for their longevity but some couples do manage to beat the odds take Joanne Woodward and Paul Newman in their time two of La La Land's hottest properties somehow they managed to stick together for half a century just how did they do it their 50 years together earned the love struck pair the title of Hollywood's golden couple they may well have become the golden couple but the fact is that the start of their relationship was to put it politely a little untidy their story began in 1953 when the 28 year old Newman not yet a Hollywood star was acting in his first Broadway play picnic it was one of those hot unbearably sticky New York days and 22 year old Woodward like Newman was an understudy feeling the heat the young actress took refuge in an air-conditioned room backstage it was there that she bumped into her future husband for the first time her initial impression of Newman it has to be said was not entirely favorable speaking to NBC's Today TV show in 2009 Woodward remembered that the immaculately dressed Newman looked like an ice cream soda ad she wrote the young actor off as nothing more than just a pretty face obviously as time passed her feelings were to change Newman by contrast was smitten from the start in his 2009 biography Paul Newman a life Sean Levy quoted Newman as saying she was modern and independent whereas I was shy and a bit conservative it took me a long time to persuade her that I wasn't as dull as I looked but let's wind back a bit and explore the backgrounds of this pair who were both to become iconic Hollywood figures in their own right Joanne Gignolette Tremere Woodward was born in February 1930 in Thomasville Georgia her parents divorced when she was a high school junior and she went to live in Greenville South Carolina graduating from high school there as a teenager she won a number of beauty contests although it was the stage to which she was irresistibly drawn she played in a number of school productions and she studied acting at Louisiana State University from 1947 to 1949 she then relocated to New York and continued her dramatic education both at the actor's studio and the neighborhood playhouse before landing that understudy part on Broadway and picnic Paul Leonard Newman was born in January 1925 his father was a Jew his mother a Christian scientist Newman spent his childhood in Shaker Heights Ohio where his dad owned a store selling sports equipment the future star is said to have bagged his first acting role aged just seven years old as a jester in a school production of Robin Hood Newman served as a radio operator and gunner with the US Navy during World War II he was for a time a gunner on an Avenger bomber plane and he also served aboard the aircraft carrier USS Bunker Hill after the war he attended Kenyon College in Ohio where he appeared in college productions his father died in 1950 and he returned to his hometown and spent 12 months running the family store but the call of the stage was obviously strong because Newman then enrolled with the drama department at Yale in 1952 he moved to New York and studied in the city at the actors studio just as Woodward had although they apparently didn't meet there Newman then got the part in the Broadway production of picnic and as we've seen he met Woodward for the first time Newman however had married in 1949 his first wife was Jackie Witt and they had three children a son born in 1950 and two daughters the oldest daughter was born in 1953 the very year Newman and Woodward met the youngest girl came in 1954 obviously a prior marriage and children added much complication to Newman and Woodward's nascent relationship so although they first met in 1953 with Woodward reluctant to be the cause of a marriage split it seems that nothing actually happened between the two until 1957 that was when they starred together in the high octane drama the long hot summer it seems that the steamy passion on the screen of that Hollywood production spilled over into real life and the upshot was that wit accepted the inevitable and acquiesced to a divorce and Newman and Woodward wed in Las Vegas in January 1958 in Levy's biography Newman recalled the couple's winter honeymoon in London there were no tourists to speak of and we would drive off into the country till we were lost and then check into country inns at nightfall it felt good being married but for Newman despite his happiness there was to be a long-lasting hangover of guilt he'd obviously felt compelled to follow his emotions and to break up his marriage but he'd done it with a heavy heart summing up his feelings to levy Newman said he felt guilty as hell and I'll carry it with me for the rest of my life 
In fact, by the time they married, Woodward was carrying Newman's child. Eleanor Teresa Newman was born on April 8, 1959, less than three months after her parents' marriage. They had two more children, Melissa in 1961 and Claire in 1965. And of course, they both had extremely successful careers in Hollywood. That still leaves us with the question of how the two resisted the flesh pots of La La Land and remained together for 50 years. In their 1988 biography, Paul and Joanne, Joe Morella and Edward Z. Epstein quoted Newman as giving an explanation. I don't like to discuss my marriage, but I will tell you something which may sound corny, but which happens to be true. I have steak at home. Why should I go out for hamburger? Joanne Woodward had a different take on why her marriage to Newman had lasted so long. The Vintage News website quoted her charming theory on why the couple stayed together. Woodward was reported to have said, Sexiness wears thin after a while and beauty fades, but to be married to a man who makes you laugh every day? Ah, now that's a real treat. Another possible reason for the couple's marriage enduring 50 years was the fact that the two did so much together. The pair were well known for their philanthropy. For example, they founded the Hole in the Wall Gang Camp, a nonprofit project that ran a summer camp for sick children. Working together can be a great way to stay together. Finally, though, the couple came up against something that did split them up Paul's mortality. In June 2008, the news broke that Newman had lung cancer. And on September 26th, he died. In the end, only death itself could break apart a couple who had stayed together for half a century. Thank you.